All right, class, um, I'm going to talk to you guys about a couple things here, and I'm going to go over some examples on the slideshow about this. But I first want to show you on Canvas how you should be looking at the modules here. The module is multiples and mold making, and this page here about first steps talks to you about what the first ones are to do. You need to do a drawing first and then building it out of clay, but I want you to watch this video on this page about undercuts because it's an important thing to understand. I have a definition of it here and this will explain it very well so that when you make your clay tile you don't create a lot of problems for yourself. Okay, so make sure you do this and then you're going to want to watch um, this. This here is the project sheet. So you're going to be making, I have it posted, you're going to be making an original re relief sculpture, which is like a tile, out of clay and then using mold making to create three castings. I actually need to edit that to one to two because down here it says one to two castings. I don't think you have enough um, plaster for three, so I'll edit that. Just depends on how much plaster you have left. You have to incorporate a motif, which is a pattern that re reoccurs. We're going to look at examples in the slideshow. And then relief means attached to the solid background of the same material. You have your clay. I gave you plaster and burlap. And then you could cast other materials if you wanted into this later on, like wax, concrete, resin, plastic. Casting materials are all materials that are liquid and then hardened somehow and it's a chemical reaction in concrete, plaster, resin, wax hardens, metal, all kinds of things are castable, even water comes ice, right? So you're going to want to do some planning sketches to turn in with the project pictures of them. So I just wanted to show you that and in the module also there's um, this is the PDF for the slideshow I'll be doing that the video of that way you can re reference it. This is an interesting video from a company that makes plastics and mold making materials. I thought it was pretty good for you to watch to re kind of um, affirm the process a bit. I'm gonna be doing another video where I make the mold, but this one's also well done. And before you do any plaster work, you're going to want to look at this here, rules, methods of pouring plaster so you don't mix it wrong and you don't want to pour it down your sink and different things like that. This is a documentary I want you to watch a bit of about an interesting artist who uses multiple, so fine art. I'm probably going to break this module up into the plaster section so it's easier to kind of follow. But let's look at this slideshow here for a minute. Making multiples of an originally designed relief sculpture tile. A motif is a recurring fragment. So on some of these examples I'll show you, these are motifs. See how they re reoccur? This one's almost all geometric motif. But even on these you have the flowers. So these are all relief sculptures. They're attached to the clay at the back but there's a sculpture. Now I'm going to be showing you a lot of things that are decorative in like a ceramic sense. This would be a really interesting thing people do with honeycomb. So think about an idea that you like that has a repetition. These are like church windows, but on a small scale. Mandrolas they use for different type of things. Now you get to decide what you want to do. It doesn't have to be flower themed or geometric you can do all kinds of, I've had since all kinds of things about their life experience war and maybe you do something about coronavirus because we're all experiencing it your experience of that okay there's a lot of different things you can do
you want to do some brainstorming and planning and do some sketches. When you do your sketches, so say this is about 4x4 four four or 4x5, four you're going to need to work pretty small because you don't have a ton of plaster. So around this size. You're going to want to make your sketch the actual size that you're going to do it. That way you can reference it a lot easier when you're carving it in the clay. Okay. Now, mold making is a process that will allow you to make copies of a thing that are roughly the same or the same. The multiple means a series of identical artworks. They're often signed limited edition for selling. In your project, you're going to be making an original pattern, they call it, out of the clay. You're going to carve into it, build it up with clay like you did the mask, but it'll be flat on the back. Now, this one's showing a 3D object of clay, but this works with all different types of objects. You can put spray release on it if you want. You actually, when I show you this, can show you cooking oil, but the main thing you want to realize is you need to attach it down or put it on something like cardboard. And when I do the other video, the demo of it, I'll show you doing it on cardboard. Then what you're going to do is take that liquid latex that I gave you in the jar with the brush and put a coat on it called the print coat. You want the coat to be really, really detailed into every little crevice. You're going to have to wait for it to dry in between and do it thin like you're painting it. And then do it again and again. Maybe 10 to 12 times. You really want to use up almost the whole jar of it so it gets pretty thick. I'm going to show you examples in the second video. Um, but you use in the process before you're done. You're not on the last coat, but one of the coats after maybe three, after about four or five coats, you may use that burlap I gave you to push into some of the areas to keep them stronger so it doesn't break and to help you not have undercuts. You don't need to cover the whole thing and not all of you will need to do this, but if you have a little area that might have an undercut in it, you would add a bit of this and then you cover it. You do it when it's tacky, then you cover it on there and you add more latex on top of it. I'll show you an example of that as well. just want to introduce the idea. At the end of it, you need to let it dry like overnight so that the latex is really dry. Then you're going to mix plaster. Rules that are really important. Do not pour it down the drain. It'll clog your drain up at home. You're going to want some type of bowl or bucket. You can use an old uh, milk jug works really well if you have a milk container left behind cut off the top and use that you want to put something down like newspaper or cloth so you don't get it everywhere don't mix more than you need because you need the extra for other things plaster sticks to plaster so you can add a bit more also it'll stick to wood tables all kinds of things so you need to be careful if you have extra at the end i recommend pouring it um, into the trash or into a box that's sealed. So after you had it released and built up like that, you're going to end up adding plaster over the top of it. Now, you can add some of the burlap to this if you needed to as well, but the goal is to get a nice coat over the whole thing, and then you can use that as your mold once you have the object coated with latex and then coated with the full plaster mother mold, you'll see that there's a flange on it, and I'm going to talk to you more about this in the other video. Then you could take out the object and cast. But talk about mixing plaster real quick. You have water in your bowl or bucket. Don't use hot water. You scoop a little bit of it at a time and sprinkle it into it evenly over the surface so it begins to fall down. You don't have to be in a big hurry, but you don't want to work slowly because it will start to set. You keep adding plaster by sprinkling over the whole surface. After a while, it will begin to mound up. 
And I'm going to show you a video of this. I'll post videos. So don't worry if you don't understand perfectly. I just want to introduce the idea. You keep doing it until you have enough. And then you, you want to tap the side of the bowl so you don't have air in it. And you slowly mix it all together with your hand to get rid of all the little particles. When you can draw a line in the plaster and it doesn't flatten out right away, it's ready to pour. That would be what you would pour. That's how you put it around your object and when you're casting the object inside, you're going to do that. The goal in pouring is to avoid air pockets. So you want it to be smooth and slowly with a steady stream. Some people like it to run off their palm, slow it down. You don't have to do that. It's helpful to apply a thin coating over the surface and allow it to set and then add more later if you need to. At the end of it all, that's when you would have a casting replica of your object. You would pull off the latex very carefully not to rip it and the mother mold and you'll have a replica. So that's the kind of idea of that. Why is it so important not to have an undercut? is because it's an protrusion that messes up your piece. It's this little piece. If you have those, it'll be really, really hard to get your, if you imagine trying to draw it out of the mold, you wouldn't be able to pull it apart. Uh-oh, what's going on inside? It says, see how the cavity it's stuck? You can't draw. So when you're doing your design, you need to have everything. You can't have things that have little caves. This they could have done if they would have had it be like that. Then it would draw out. So when you're doing your designs with with uh, your plaster, to make your plaster object, you need to get rid of the undercuts. But when you're doing your designs, you need your line work to have kind of a V cut if it's going downward like a V or above the round so you can pull it out. Yeah, I want you to watch this again later on. This is a, for making injection molding, but it's the same idea for all of it. You're going to want to make sure you're careful about that. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to do some of this stuff, but I really want to make sure that you um, spend some time designing it and looking at these materials before you start um, doing any of the plaster work. Okay, well, I'll talk to you soon. Hopefully you're all staying safe out there and not, um, not going out in public too much if you don't have to and washing your hands and doing all the good stuff to be safe. All right, guys, I wish I could be there to see your molds in progress in person, but it's this is not necessarily ideal, but we'll figure out ways to do it. And I will be available um, via Pronto and email and different things if you need to. And during my office hours, we can do video chatting if you need to to show me things. So just let me know if you're struggling. I need, I'll be able to help you in a lot of different ways, okay? Don't forget to submit your wire project and also if you go into assignments, your sculpture review is also due today. So don't forget about that either. Alright, take care.